My name is Pablo and this is the NF Tables uh, practical workshop and I'm very happy to be here with uh, and Luke Fox here in the, in the Netherlands and um, we are going to um, basically we are going to start by, by installing um, the basic libraries, user space tools and try to get a fresh kernel. Um, the latest, the best, because NF Tables is an ongoing development effort, so the latest, uh, the last box you're going to hit. So, mm -hmm. and um, and the first thing is is to get something close to latest, is whether from packages or from from the source code itself, compile it and cook it yourself. Let's start from a user point of view um, for the installation. Basically, what we need is the library. The libraries. We have several of them. We need libmnl. This is the low-level um, netlink library. Mini-nl. It's one of the, the libraries that are available to communicate to communicate um, through NetLink. You can also use raw NetLink sockets, but using this kind of library is is good to have because you are going to reuse um, quite a lot of interfaces that were already designed to to interact with NetLink in the right way. So it's always good to, to reuse <coughs> this kind of libraries. I, I have met people telling me, "Oh, I don't want to use these libraries. I want to make my own NetLink sockets and so on," but I mean, this, this is not the kind of practical people that, because they are going to reinvent the wheel and hit the, the same problems over and over again. So it's always better to use one of these libraries. It's very small one, it's a very small dependency. So, the next, next thing is NFT NL. NFT stands for NF tables and NL from, stands for NetLink. This is the major library so far, but we'll, we'll get another one at some point. This is the low-level NF Tables NetLink library. So it basically provides all the interfaces to create the NF Tables objects and convert them to NetLink format. And then we can basically push them into the kernel. And then when, when dumping them from the kernel, we can parse the NetLink message and, 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 and convert them to, to, to objects. And these objects are easier to work with than rather than the raw NetLink message, of course. So, and then we, we've got NF tables, that is the command line interface. This is going to this package will result in a tool whose name is NFT. So that's the and user mode. Yes, yes, it's from the user land, yes, this is what we need. And then from um, we need a fresh a fresh Linux kernel, the latest, the best. Four point six. Yeah, four starting four point point whatever. I mean three point eighteen is is already is already good to start playing with this. And we got the first release in three. Um, that release was 3.13, but I mean, very little features are available there. And also, we got hidden the hidden features to all many bugs. So, mm -hmm. so basically, we got we got we got good at 3.18 to start playing with it. But even better now that we we got. I mean, every development cycle is about three months, so it's quite a bit of time since. And um, so, did, between 13 and 18, did you add all of those primitives, that, uh, expressions? I think you called them in your because very basic, very basic, a very little amount of expressions. Yeah, 22. So um, yes, now we we got 22, okay. but at that time we got even. I think we got the very basic ones, just the basic, the, 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 those that allows us to basically. Um, to perform the most basic action actions such, such as um, fetching fetching um, 
payload uh, data, place it in the register and compare it, also meet information, connection tracking, and, and counters. So we, we've got, at that time, we didn't have, we didn't have for example, the, the expression that allows us to reject traffic. Not simple drops, but rejections. So it's kind of basic filtering that, that you can do here. And um, as we were getting more people involved, that has helped also a lot. Um, and we got more people testing, we, we got better at some point. So. Um, okay, so to install to install the libraries, I mean this co compiling your own kernel is is slower, slower uh, the, the slowest um, path. If you build it from scratch and you use one of those configs available in any of the existing distributions, it's going to take to take long. But anyway, distribution are, distributions are offering fresh kernels um, very easily. So. And actually, I was checking Debian is offering 4.4 and from unstable, right? Or 4.5, something like that. It's quite recent. And um, so, from user land, compilation is typical, typical spellings. So, basically, configure. Make a make install and um, if you want to get the most recent recent versions of the source code in user space, just why I get clone the code and then keep that filter of or just slash and then the the, the project name so just yes. and if you follow this path you have to involve there is we have a a small script to gen that generates the um, the basic building uh, build build infrastructure Okay. So let's make sure we get we get all on the same page and then we we keep going. If you type NFT you get some some output. Um, yeah but just do NFT it's just no command specified. Okay, that's yeah, good, that's good. Yeah. Then you are good. So um, it's natural from April. April sixteen. Okay, that's fine. It's yeah. fine. Um, I'll try to make a release today, probably. So, so we push distributions to, yep. to refresh. Um, so could you try, let's try just a basic command. Let's try NFT list full set. This is the most generic way to list your full rule set. You should get nothing. No. Good. But no errors. How do I flash the old uh, flash rules and something? I, I, I added some things. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. yes, yes, list it. Yes, okay, yes, I will even check it. Okay. So, check it. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, if, if things are going fine, you will just get nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay? So how, how do I remove these? So you can you can flash your entire rule set. If you already got something, you can just flash the whole rule set. Right. Yes. Okay, so then going back this thing you get nothing and good. So first thing, now that we uh, got NFT working. Let's add a table. As I said in the previous presentation, um, in NFT we get we get empty um, empty tables initially. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they are basically they have no there are no semantics on tables anymore compared to IP tables. 
it's just a container of chains and chains will contain rules and also tables are also containers of of sets, sets, maps and so on. So first thing should be we NFT add table and if we don't specify specify the family now, it will default on IP. Okay? So let's let's indicate this explicitly. But this is not necessary. Okay? So and now let's create a table, let's create a we could use any name, but I need to use filter because we are familiarized already with with IP tables. And this is the typical name that filter table has gotten. So now uh, if we go back and list the rule set, we, we should get we should get a empty table listing. Good? Good. So now let's follow let's follow up any because this is not very useful. Let's add our first, this is configure. configure. Yes, our first base chain. The add chain. Now we have to indicate the family, the table, and then the chain name. Let's so you could have multiple tables with the same name in different families? Yes. Uh, so it might be good practice to put the name in the family, uh, in the table, the family in the table name, like I, uh, filter underscore IP or something, so it's more clear? Mm -hmm. Not really, because you have to indicate the family every time you, if, if you want to list a specific table. Right, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I wonder if people can get confused between the families if they use reuse the same name in the, uh, mm. well, maybe not for filter. Mm -hmm. Chain filter and that's indicate a name that well, let's add the input the input chain. This is a base chain, so we have to indicate the the, the configuration. We have to indicate the um We indicate the type. We have to indicate the, the book. We could have chosen in instead of input, something smaller, but it's fine. And then we can indicate we have to indicate the priority. This is the bare minimum things that we have to um, specify. The important thing if you are from not from the interactive shell as we are now with. You're currently from batch, right? I guess. So you have to you need the backslash and the semicolon. And now we close. Okay. <coughs> Can you maybe uh, put a green or red line underneath the the words that are uh, names? Okay. So these are names, right? So this. Yeah. These are names. Custom names that we and hook input was also a name, wasn't it? Hook input, it's it's a kind of hook. We have different kind of hooks. We have. But the input, the word input was also a name, yes. This no. was a name. But not the other input. Not the other one. This is a keyword. Okay. Oh, that's a little bit confusing. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I mean, you tell me, you tell me this because I have this in my head and it's so close to me that it's, I have to make an effort to do it. So, so we could just uh, call these in, so if you prefer, okay? Um, uh, the priority indicates the, the order uh, in, in which we get the, the, the chains evaluated. So we have a list of chains and the uh, smaller, the, uh, we have, we have, it's, it's a sign, um, Sign thirty two bits integer. So the the smallest is gets small priority. The largest number gets uh, the lower priority. Okay. Um, so I, I see that it added uh, policy accepts. 
Yes, basically. yes, that's another, that's, this is just the bare minimum we need, but you can also indicate the, the policy. This is, this is kind of legacy stuff that we got at some point. Mm -hmm. So IP tables um, got the four policies for chains. Mm -hmm. Originally, um, Patrick's idea was not to have this policy built in, in the chain, but we're working, we're working on the compatibility layer to have a same way to map IP tables rule sets to NF tables, we need them. And at some point, we, we got users that, that started to ask for this. I mean, users got the, the habit of working with IP tables. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so, um, so this is simply an implicit rule, the, the policy. Last, it, it's, last. it's another statement that is part of this of the rule configuration. Right. Okay. So you can you 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 could just you could in, indicate it after the semicolon here. Yes. Uh, policy and drop or accept that are two the the two, the two possible. Okay. This is okay. So now we got we got a chain registered. And we we are seeing already traffic flowing through it. The input chain. We have reused um, the existing hooks that we have in the filter. So basically, we have the nick. Um, and from let's let's depict this for the IP family, okay? For the IP family, we got a nick, and then. At some point, once we enter layer layer three, we get pre routing. And then the routing decision. So what to do with this? If this is if this is local, we pass it to input. Okay. And then after input, it gets to the to the local process. Okay. If this is not for us, so we get to forward, and then after forward, we get to post routing. And here we go, we, we get back to the network, we go back to the network. And in case this is local generated traffic um, sent by the process, so output, we got the routing. So this, this this didn't change at all. It's mm -hmm. exactly the same. Um, okay, and I'll show you later. We will see more families. I mean, for IPv6, it, it is exactly the same. Um, for ARP, we we don't get forward. We only got um, input and output, if I remember correctly. And and then um, oh. And then for bridge, for bridge, I don't know by heart. So anyway, um, well, let, let's see this with examples. So um, what else? Um, let's let's add a rule, a simple rule. So now let's get the first rule. And let's let's check if we are seeing any kind of traffic. So we are going to add. Rule. Uh, we have to indicate. Come again. The table. These are names of keywords. Filter. Input. This is again a name. And now. Now that we are, we have already specified the hand rule that is basically the stuff of here. Now I'm going to use the backslash. Because no, no rule here. Okay, here. So 
Now I need to. Now we can include. We can include the first statement. Okay, we are just going to a counter just to check that we are seeing traffic. So after this rule, we generate some traffic. Then going back to listing the rule set, you should see the counter getting updated. So this is counter. Yeah, if we do list rule set, it always says counter package to bytes 284. So that two packets are already in there. Okay, that's good. That's good, so it's working. Good. Can you initialize it with a value already? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can restore you can restore counters, oh, yeah. and so since since you can um, store the listing into a file and then restore it, you can um, you can restore the counter values. Yes, we have a, we have we have a, currently we have two kind of stateful statements. One of them is counter, another one that that exists is limit, and we will get another one soon. Um, and specifically with counter, it's in interesting to, to, to be able to resolve this, right? So, what else? Now we got this. Um, let's try something. Let's play with, with sets, okay? Okay, sets. So. At our first set, so we hit at set. Now, come in again. The table, and then the set name. Yeah, we can call these. Test. Okay. Maybe they can use this. Let's see if it works. Oh, I'll take it. Okay. So, um, and, and now we have to indicate, we, we have to indicate the, the, the type that, that the set is going to, for the elements, the kind of elements that it's going to store. Now we take the type, and we can start with a simple simple set just containing IPv4 addresses. Um, Objects in a patch, so we can we, we, we can we, we get something instead of having to keep in in your head every single data type. We can just indicate type of and the, the selector, so it's easier to to declare sets. Mm. Anyway, if if you if you want to make sure for to know what data type. A selector. What kind of what kind of type is attached to a specific selector? You can describe. You can use the describe command. And empty describe. If you indicate IP source address, it will it will show you a line that um, describes the data type for this. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, something like 32 bits, IPv4 address, something like that. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. It also indicate endianness, right? Big, big endian. Yes. Mm. No, it's just based on int integer. Good. Good. So, so we can we can now add elements. I'm going to skip these. Here after these. Now 
now to the add elements again. The handle. Okay. So we know what test we are working with. And now just Oh, let's see the prefix. Okay. Um, oh, actually, this is this is broken with the kernel you are working. So you can use prefixes or ranges. Yes, there are a couple of patches that are already in 4.6 mm -hmm. that needs to be passed to a stable. So, so we get ranges fixed. So let let's start now with not not working with ranges or uh, prefixes, otherwise we have problems. So just, I mean, this is not very useful. This, this, this. Every time we use the, it would, it would create a full set just for one single element. Um, I mean, in case we dynamically want to update it, um, it's good. But just a set for one single element is overkill, right? So um, now after this, we can. So test is a is a. Keyword, yeah. Oh. Test is a keyword. And yes. Yeah. I got. I tried. Okay. I tried. I was. Yes. 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 <laughs> that that will know will not happen with um, the ongoing kernel release with 4.7, and I try to get that into a stable. Bit. There are a couple of pretty small patches actually. And the code in, in user space is already there. So it's just, just 14 lines of code in the kernel. So, mm -hmm. yes, this is a uh, name. So basically, we have created, we, we created a, a, a test set, and we, yeah, we have just added a, a element, one single element. So now we can, we can refer to this set from. From rules, input, and So the app indicates a reference to an existing set. If you try to, to specify an existing set, it should be up. And, and then basically just, so we are going to count traffic for matching packets for this set. So if you test it, yes, thing in your flow back should, should work. Yes? Good. Okay, so let's try something a bit more sophisticated, okay? Let's, mm -hmm. let's have a look at maps. So, um, in case we want to declare a name map, we just... We indicate add map and then the handle again. B filter. And now um, we're going to use test because it will reject. So we can call this test 2. Uh, lacking a better name, so. So we a name. Now, after this, we have to. Um, indicated is the type. So here we are going to map. Um, we can map. Um, type is IP 
for address, then button mark. Does this work? Unexpected. Unexpected. Uh, yeah, the mark. The mark. There was a, a bug in all NFT versions. Basically, was reacting mark for no reason. So if mark is not working, except if I add a uh, semicolon. Ah, yes, if semicolon is missing. Yes, I forgot. No, semicolon is missing. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. Good. So. <laughs> Okay, so we, we have created we have created now, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was wondering why the backslash is not. Why you need to escape the uh, semicolon? Um, because it, it got a special semantics in Bash. Yeah. Oh, otherwise so it's, it's a especially bash. Uh, on the fly indicator. Okay, yeah. Yes, yes, Get yes, it. yes, yes. Yeah. yes. So yes, in the in the that's why that's that's another reason uh, for having the the interactive or the native shell. So we can skip this. Yeah. Um, so now that we created the map, we can use it from a row. Or we can we can add new elements. Mm -hmm. We can use elements. Elements to, to add elements to a map. There's two and then The elements should be and then two elements in one single go and I'm mapping um, this IP address this map to be this mark and this other one to that other so um, now if we go as uh, rule Unless we use log, we don't have like 
easy way to display the mark. So we can you can probably replace meta by CT instead. So we use the contract, the connection tracking mark. Okay? And then with the contract tool, if you install it with contract minus L uppercase, you should get the listing of of flows in your in your system. If it's showing nothing, you probably need to um, before this you have to make sure you mod pro and then contract Okay, just to make sure the um, that IP4 tracking is made. So with this generating local traffic, you should see via contract minus L uppercase. You should see um, that those um, originated by by the local host, get this mark. Is it working? You can you explain the purpose of the marks or what you can do? Of well, the contract mark, the, um, I mean, you can use it in different ways. I mean, the contract mark allows you to, to set a specific mark to, to ongoing flows, and you can you can use that mark to, the main purpose is to restore it on follow-up packets that are, packet, uh, are part of the flow. So you, you classify that flow, using this mark mm -hmm. and, and then every time we get an, a packet from original or reply direction we can restore that contract mark back to the packet and then we can perform the action on that packet based on that map. We can we can keep doing the same thing consistently. So in in my IP tables front end I use this contract mark to distinguish between uh, related session a uh, related traffic? No established traffic? Established that should be accepted as the first rule. Yep. Uh, but then some of it should go to the NFQ zero, some of it should ah, go yes. to one, and some of it should be simply accept. Uh, so that, that, that's where I use the... Yeah, so, so you use the mark to decide what traffic, what packets go to, right, yeah. to user space, or what traffic. This flow I have already inspected, so it's fine to keep going. Right? Yeah. Good. I mean... Um, Yes, many many application layer classifications are relying on this. Thing. Okay. So finally, do you do you get it working? Good. Good. So the, the the good thing about the map is that in I mean with with IP tables we would we would need we would need two rules to to get this working. Yeah. Like I said, I normally use every uh, FW builder to create the IP table scripts. And you can have nice groups of objects in, in your GUI, but then you create a lot of rules in your IP yes. table script. Yes, if you look at it, it's like, whoa. Yeah, it's <laughs> lots yeah. of rules. And the more rules we get, the, the less performant we I mean. Yeah. There's a linear inspection. It's all about that linear, linear inspection. So, um, yes, here, quickly, I mean, behind in the kernel, for this kind of set, we have a, a hash table implementation that mm -hmm. scale up, it scales up nicely. No. And so, um, I mean, in practice, searching for the, the, the map, mm. the correspondence would be very, very fast. Mm. What about updates? Uh, can, you, can you do live updates and how, how, how real time are they? How fast are they? They are very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, yes, you can you can update the the, the set at any time. I mean, you can add new elements or delete existing elements anytime. Hmm. Because I think, but so if if you would do an add or a delete behind the scenes, there is a netlink connection, or existing or a new netlink connection probably being made. Some message is being sent that yes. is, it's applied. Yeah. From yeah, regarding internals, what it what it ha what is happening here is that um, NFT creates a, a create a batch, mm -hmm. and that batch 
is it got a message initial initial message telling this is the the, the, the head of batch mm -hmm. and then you get um, the that message that, that express the, this command add a new element with all those attributes and so on and then you have a training message telling this is the end of the batch and that training is, is actually the semantics of that training message is commit so you can use this um, format to well, actually when we use nft minus f to restore the rule set we, we use this batch infrastructure to play several messages and then we when when we get the trading message we apply in one single go in an atomic fashion. That's why it's very important to use NFT minus F on this non native scripting capabilities and not use your own shadow scripts. Actually shadow scripts um, can be can be way 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 uh, more slow than than using the NFT minus F. Um, I think it was in Canada in Ottawa in 2015, um, there were some people from Akamai um, evaluating NF tables. They are not, I think they are not using it yet, but, but they use IP tables and IP set. That is the, um, the extreme infrastructure to, to, to um, uh, create sets and so on and, and, from, I use, and use them from IP tables. So it's also flexible uh, as the one we have in NFT, but it's, it's also very powerful. I mean, it's very good. So the, so the message you sent, if you add an element, only the new element is sent to the kernel, like an incremental update, or does the tool first get the current no. list? Yes, it's just this element. Okay, yeah, that's just exactly. yeah. That's another thing. So, yeah, so basically, just to finish, I mean, comparing IP tables with NFT, yeah. um, um, with one million, I said with one million entries, IP set was taking close to two seconds, and NFT was taking one to one to eight seconds, so it's slightly less. But the good thing is that IP set got now atomic um, um, atomic um, in insertion of elements, mm. so they are published in a non atomic fashion. So, so NFT is making it faster and and providing atomicity. So it's very fast. I don't know what kind of system they were using, but two, two seconds for one million entries is, is good. Mm -hmm. They were happy with it. I mean, they, they are supposed to have lots of, um, they use this for white listing or black listing, mm -hmm. and they, they are supposed to have lots of, they have a reputation system, so. Um. Okay, so. Um, okay. Okay, we can get this. Um, we can combine this with concatenations. So would you prefer we just see a, a simple rule with concatenations and then we we'll mix it with this? Mm -hmm. um, okay, better something more simple, right? Because as I said in the previous presentation, this Lego fashion thing, the idea is that we can just plug things and, and make, make uh, get more complex stuff. So, but let's have a look at concatenations before. Oh, uh, before going to concatenations, we can also use maps with in, 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 uh, implicit maps from rules. Okay, so we can define a map from a rule without needing to to declare a map with a specific name. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can just something and do something like this. Uh, rule um, IP filter. Input again. These are names, and um, exactly for the same example before, we need CP mark, and this mark will be set based on the IP source address, right? And um, this says map, and then we can just include. If we are not going to, if it's going to be, we are not going to modify this mapping. Um,
Okay, this should work. Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So this is this is exactly the same thing as before, but in this case we create we created a implicit map, and this is implicit map is is not it, it's constant. We cannot modify it. Okay. Yeah. So depending on your needs, you use a constant map, mm -hmm. or you just create a map that you can dynamically update. Yeah, the rule set is now showing up as a normal rule, including the map, like we typed it here instead of having the. Good. And um, these implicit maps, they are not listed as maps in the map. In the, I mean, when you list the rule set, you have uh, initially you have the the sets and maps that are declared. Those they, they, they get a public name. Mm -hmm. These actually internally they get a name. It's yeah, an internal name. But you can't refer to them from another rule now because you don't have a name. You can't. You cannot. Yeah, that's what I mean. These you can't refer to, and the other ones you name before. Yes, you can exactly. You can, yes, yes. From different rules, you can um, refer to hmm. um, a name map, and this one it's. Yeah, this is more like a variable within a loop. You can't address from the outside, but it's something you declare before you can uh, address. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Okay. Hmm. So. Um, Yes. I see I can do NFT list sets, and then I see the sets, but is there something similar for maps? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> there is a Google Summer of Code guy that is working on that. <laughs> so someone someone um, anticipated your wishes. So, okay. so um, concatenations. Um, so what can we do? This is basically a T and rule. And we indicate a handle again, filter, input, this R again. Names, no keywords, good. Let's do this one um, based on meta IIF. This is the input interface. Okay. Then we got dot to indicate decontamination. And this is going to be concatenated to another selector. Um, we can use the IP source. Address. Okay. And then after this, now get Better if you use IIF name because uh, I tell you the difference between so this is a IIF and IIF name. The difference the difference is that this one uses the interface name and this in the interface index inside the kernel. Every interface gets an index that is it's visible. Um, with uh, via IP space link, so it's basically the first number you find, and you find you see the column. This is this is um, assign um, when the device is created from the kernel. Okay, so IIF is faster. It's just a 32-bit number that we're going to compare. IIF can be 60, 16 bytes. Okay, this it says string comparison, but it's slower. So, um, but I have I, I, I interface, input interface, no name, needs that the interface exists 
good. So if you don't have ETH2 or ETH1, it's going to, NFT will bail out. It will tell, okay, this interface don't exist. But I have name, doesn't check that. So why, apart from the performance reasons to have this, there is another reason that, we, I mean, we have, we have dynamic interfaces, like PPP or, I mean, these days we also have tabs with virtual machines or LXC containers that are just um, showing, showing and, and vanishing. We create them and we destroy them very quickly. So using IIF in this scenario, um, it, it will imply that you, you kind of coordinate with NF tables and some sort of application or a script to, to, dynamically, to dynamically insert insert rules based on that, using IIF. But if you just um, predict, if you know the interface name that you're going to have and, and you just want to load the rule set and forget about this kind of dynamic updates that you will need when, when getting new virtual machines and so on, you just uh, use IF name and it's, all, it's going to work all the time. So it's going to be that slow to stream comparison. So. Okay. Is this working for you? Let's let's just yes, take counter. We get, <coughs> get an error. Cannot mm -hmm. error cannot use variable size data type string in concat expressions. Ah, oh, that's right. That's right. That's something we have to fix. Yes, it's the, we have we have limitations, and the current limitations is that. We can only use concatenation with fixed data types. If you use, if you use an, an NFT describe, I have name, it'll, it will tell you a string, okay, but no fixed data type. So, um, although it does say say that it's sixty characters, that seems to fix. Yes, it's it's something that we have to fix in user space. So it's something it doesn't. It's, that that's another good thing about NFT. Um, we, um, the amount of code that we have in kernel space compared to IP tables, it's something like I mean, 60% less. And we, we get way more code base in user space. I mean, the, on, my, on my laptop, NFT is around one megabyte big. So it's, it's a compact compiler tool, so it's a bit more sophisticated. You can it, com, com, compare it to IP tables. IP tables, I think it's 100k, I think, or 200k, something like that, without without extensions. So yes, this will not work because currently we, we cannot specify um, we cannot specify um, data types that have no fixed length. But actually, NFT describe is telling this has a fixed name, this has a fixed length. So it's something that we have to fix in in user space. So um, let's go back to using to use IIF, okay? And but then we have to use um, the same. So let's cheat. I, I don't know what you have there. Just make sure that you are using. Um, just make sure that you are using interfaces that exist on your on your computer. Good. Or just create a tune tab. I mean, with the tune tab command, you get a tab device. You have a command to get the IIF value of your interfaces, like uh, uh, IP show, address show or something. Would that include it? With, with, um, so you want to know the, the, in, the interface index mm -hmm. with IP link? IP. It's the first number that shows. It shows a number and then colon. It says one, I think it starts by zero, zero right? Or oh, no, zero is wildcard, right? It starts with one. With one, right? Yes, zero is wildcard. Or reserved, or something. I don't remember the reason, but yes, I remember it was reserved. So yes, potentially we will have concatenations for every selector. But right now we have some some little limitations. And so yeah, at vkvkntables.org, 
um, you have a wiki page with user documentation. And at the, at, the, at, the, at the bottom of it, you will find a list of supported feature, features. Mm -hmm. I think concatenations were added 318, I think. Yeah. You can yeah, okay, uh, but uh, my laptop I've got Debian, and normally I'm using uh, Arch Linux, which is uh, uh, very up to date. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's probably going to work there. Yeah. Yes. So, um, there is also a list there. I mean, we, we are trying to fill that, keep that with as much information as possible, with also not only with user documentation, but development progress. Mm -hmm. So, there is also a um, a list of extensions that we have in AP tables that are not just supported in NF tables, and also comments if there is, if there is any plan or not to include it, or some feedback, and so on. I would need exactly, I would need to check, but I would say that we are supporting around 70, 75% 70, of features that are available in AP tables already. Mm. Okay, so um, is there a command to reset counters? To reset counters? Not yet, but um, I have a path set to add name stateful objects. So basically, objects that get some internal state, mm. like counters, they are um, good to fetch and reset in atomic fashion. Mm -hmm. So people need this for accounting, or for example, a quota expression so you can uh, reset the quota mm -hmm. or up, up, upgrade it and another example is can be break, the rate limiting is another state for expression so mm -hmm. if you want to even simple counters when you're testing things might be I like it to uh, wipe the slate clean to yeah, have everything everything at zero again and then test to have a name and that you you would prefer if it's if you explicitly declare declare the the counter or you implicitly declare it and then indicate the name maybe both uh, yes. <laughs> maybe a wipe everything and, and a specific i mean i mean following following the approach that we that we have in our tables to keep it consistent um it would be good to do, do exactly the same thing as we do with set maps and so on so if you want to name set or map you invoke NFT add in this case will be counter and then you indicate the name or in case you, you want to in initialize it and then you refer from the rule to that object and then if you um, don't care about names you just use the current variant that we have if you don't want to, if you don't want to reset that or okay so um, What else? Oh, okay. Let's combine concatenations with with a map. Okay. Just to twist this thing a bit more. So um, there is a nice feature, Patrick's and Patrick's for this already. Um, I just. I'll show you later. We cannot test with this old kernels and old user space tools. But with the next with the next release, you, you will have it uh, flow tables. Yeah. I'll, I'll explain you the, con the, the concept. So, um, but flow tables are basically the dynamically populated sets. So based on the, what we observe from packets, mm -hmm. we can we can we take we take. The information that, that we want to keep in the table, and we populate the table with that information. So, um, calculations. Yes. Would that replace contract parking? It, it it is a kind of no. It will not because contract is doing way more than that. But you could build your own kind of connection tracking tables in some way, some for a specific purpose. Is it lighter lighter weight? Yes, it would be way lighter weight. Mm -hmm. Will be lighter weight, um, but contract is very optimized. Mm -hmm. I mean, many many people have been tweaking. There are all kind of tweaks. Or, I mean, it will be. I, I, I suspect. I would expect that you get more performance because 
you are doing way less things with, with this lightweight connection tracking table. Because contracting TCP is also, I mean, making sure that the packet is inside, inside a valid um, window, otherwise it's going to mark it as invalid and all that kind of uh, sanity, sanity checks, validation checks that it performs. I mean, for OEDP for and ICMP and so on, this is very simple, but for TCP, yeah. it's a bit more sophisticated. So let's mix these two. NFT. Uh, so far, we are using all the time uh, at rule. Of course, we can delete rules. And so far, to delete rules, we have to indicate the handle. I, I'll make, let's make an example with with deletions after this, okay? So we can also replace, of course. And um, I'll show you. So, and also we can insert or insert or add. This is, we are retaining the same semantics as, as in AP tables. Add is append, basically, and insert is place it before the current, the, 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 the rule that you indicate. And you can also indicate the position based on a unique handle, so you place it before or after a specific point. Okay, um, contrary to what we have on AP tables, we have uh, every time we create a rule, internally the kernel uh, allocates a unique handle. It's a 64 bits handle, unique, and, and instead of having relative positions in AP tables, that was a bit of a mess with dynamic rule sets. I mean, if two, two invocations of IP tables were racing to update, you were probably not placing things in the right way, in the right position. So now with the unique handle, we don't have this problem anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. let's have a look at, at that after this, okay? Do you expect more than 4 billion rules? Huh? Do you expect more than 4 billion rules? <laughs> <laughs> Which is 64 bit handle? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you can calculate automatic. how long it will take until we can see on the 64. I think I will be retired. <laughs> Uh, but I can my mate, huh? because they also do DDoS protection, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah, or it will be someone else's problem. <laughs> <laughs> Not mine. Okay. Um, so, again, typical spelling. Okay, this works. These are our names. And um, so let's combine information with maps. So um, we can use the previous example. Okay, let's twist this a bit. So um, This is a, um, a simple concatenation. So now I'm going to combine this or just to follow the process to combine it to um, to map it to set to set a mark. Okay. So I'm going to place on this. I'm going to rewrite re this. Oh, actually, filter input. Okay. And now we are going to CT mark. We are going to set it, okay, based on 
It, it may it may complain about not having enough context, something like that. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, the, the current concatenation code, I mean NFT is capable of generating the um, the dependency that it needs, mm -hmm. so the user doesn't have to um, indicate everything that needs to be in place. So NFT you can infer what you need. If you indicate TCP port, then basically it's it's. Obvious that you you want to make sure that no, IP is implied. Yes, exactly. Yep. That IP is is implied. So I will need to check this, but I think you if you get an error, I think currently the, I think the two currently tell something like I have no context. Mm. So and it's going to tell about this. So you you will have to indicate this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Maps. Let's have a look at the additions, okay? So let's just check root additions. It's, it's, this one is very easy. Uh, currently, we you have to list the rule set with minus a, okay? And with minus a, you will see when listing the rule set, when you get the listing, in the rules, you see something like this, handle, then one, okay? So this is, this is the unique handle that is, mm -hmm. is assigned to the rule. Mm -hmm. So to the need rules. Yes. You indicate the need, uh, not, not deals only, yeah? This is like a common mistake. Um, then the handle. And then, so these are names. And now we have to indicate the handle number. The rule handle number. Handle. That the number. Okay. Works. Good. And and then just to finish with this, replacements. Group replacements. And a D, um, replace, and then if I remember correctly, you have to indicate the position and then the handle number, and now the new rule that you want to you want that. A D filter should be, it should be like that. Input and then the new rule. Cool. Uh, yes, it's missing here. No, no. 
Okay, so I think I think this position was coming after the hand rule. Okay. Did you guys get it right? Yeah, it's uh, replace rule IP filter. This one came position. came in December actually. This during Christmas. It was one of the Google Summer of Code guys at that time that, that worked on this. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was that was he added. Yeah, this. I blame you, but too. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This, this, this is quite recent feature, actually. It's very simple one, but it's quite recent. So that's basically it. Just um, point you to. I mean, you have the wiki page. If you don't want to to deal with all those backlash, to 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 remove the bash semantics, you just enter NFT minus E. To, to get to get away from it, just Control D, and so far the only thing that you get is the history, and but at some point we will get a auto completion. Okay. Position. And you replace rule, type the filter, and then the position, and then the rule, the new rule that you want to do. Yeah. 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 Okay. Get position. So let me check my rule. Right now. So now, how do I flush everything again? That was NFT. Yeah, not sure. Yes, yes, right, everything like that. If you want to flash just a table, you just NFT flash table and the name of the table, I mean the handle IP and table name. That will basically, that behaves exactly like IP tables, but like flashing a IP tables table. Mm -hmm. So you keep, if you do NFT flush table name, IP name, mm -hmm. You will still get. You will keep. You will keep the the base chains and the you know base chains. So it's basically behaving the same way as IP table, just moving the rules. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 So just to get me a little bit on the same page. So what was the actual reason to start with this project and why, why did he replace oh, the table? That's probably, I mean, I'm not probably the person to reply to that because it, Patrick started this in, in 2008, 2009. And, um, but the motivations are, I mean, at that time we, we were noticing already that we were having limitations with, with IP tables. It's new new kernel code base yeah, and okay. new user space code code base. Yeah. We are we are reusing all the existing net filter components. Mm -hmm. We yeah. are using connection tracking, the Nexus system, login infrastructure, user space queuing. Everything is being mm -hmm. reused, but only the we have we have only replaced the classifier. Yeah, really. Okay. And and it, it is still a lot of work. I mean, yeah. it, to make it in this generic way. But I mean, this design is. is it's very nice. It's something that um, Patrick started. Um, the, the project is full at some time, at some point, and then I jump on it and polish it to, to get in good shape to recover it, and, and now it seems to be flying. So I mean, we have all these corners to polish, mm -hmm. and there are all things that are a bit rusty in, in terms of error messages and so on, but they can be all improved. And mm -hmm. the good thing is that. Most of the, um, we have things that we know that we have problems in the kernel, but they will fix them. Mm -hmm. But most most of the kernel infrastructure is already there. Mm -hmm. So now we can keep updating user space mm -hmm. without without telling users you way to upgrade your kernel. Yeah, that's uh, good. Yeah, and also the, the syntax, uh, first that I read about it, uh, you can actually use the syntax which is very, uh, similar to IP tables and still work with uh, with net, net filter, so that's uh, also a good thing. You don't so have to completely rewrite everything all at once. Yeah. If we if we have no arguments to change syntax, syntax. I mean, if it's not, if it's not going to get any better, I mean, the moment this slash is what we needed. Yeah, something yeah. compact and and this auto generation of dependencies is something also very nice. Mm -hmm. It's basically. Uh, placing them when generating the bytecode and then when listing back from user, from kernel space, mm -hmm. it's detecting what it's written then and removing it. Yeah. So and that's that compact compact syntax is mm. it's nice to have. Yeah. Oh yeah, those IP chains we have. IP chains. Yes. Yeah. 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 Before that, I think it was just, just blanking out on the name. But yeah. It was just thing. You know? No, just was. Mm. 
It's part of the look. Ah, uh, bro. Just he he brought he poured he poured the the sixteen firewall uh, in BSD. Mm -hmm. He poured it to Linux. It was the first firewall available in Linux. Okay. So you have the person that wrote the first firewall for Linux here. Yeah. <laughs> I did it now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I just I just when he invited me, I saw his his email. Yeah. And I remember myself reading history and yeah. and I, this guy I know yeah. him. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah.